Welcome back to the Charismatic Voice. Recently, we conducted a poll on the YouTube community page asking you which Dio song we should do next on the channel. And the majority of you responded, Holy Diver. So that's what we're going to do. Now, I love Dio. I've been going through this, uh, I guess, an obsession with his voice. Many of you have probably experienced this, but this is my first time getting to hear him and start to explore him right on this channel. And I haven't heard his band Dio with Dio singing yet. So this will be my first time hearing them together. This song on the surface looks like it's about Satan descending into hell. However, in an interview, Dio said that it's actually about a Christ figure. It's kind of interesting twist on those lyrics there. We're definitely going to be taking a look at the lyrics and, of course, listening to his godlike voice. Let's get to it. Say a quick word about these introductions that I've heard to some of Dio's songs now. Uh, recently, we did a uh, reaction analysis of Gates of Babylon. That was also from that YouTube poll, by the way. I loved your comments on that and just had to do Gates of Babylon as well. So uh, if you haven't seen it, that was last Tuesday's video. Um, this is interesting. I'm hearing the same kind of pitch bidding happening here. It's not as obvious as it was in the intro of Gates of Babylon, but you hear that. It definitely has this feeling of setting the stage. There's a certain ominousness as well here because you hear the sound of the wind and a low note that's just been sustained a bunch. Oh, let's go back, see if you can catch some of that pitch bending. It's creepy. Right there, I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> A lot of interesting sounds in there. <laughs> it almost sounds like one of those, ah, what are they called? It's one of those whistles that you have, uh, thing that you, it's a slide whistle. And one of those things that you slide where it can, uh, or it could even be like a bottle that you blow water into and then the water goes away and it changes the pitch. Anyhow, uh, really, really cool sounds in the background. Fun sound design. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That was great. It's like really, really creepy. And then all of a sudden, bam. That was a very shocking entrance. Nope, wasn't ready the second time either. Okay, 
couple couple immediate things. I love the energy and his consonants, right? He's got just extraordinary diction. It's so easy to understand him regardless of where he is in his range. I like the bits of grit that he adds and takes away and brings some cleanness. And then I, I've been thinking about it. I was thinking about his e-vowels. I know. These are the things that I muse over. Like, wow, Dio's voice is amazing. How does he sing that one vowel? He has really cool vowel placement. He really, he'll play around with it, but he also has really clean vowels. Um, I think it was on me. Uh, he will, it sounds like he rounds just a little bit. So if you round your lips a little bit on an E vowel, sometimes that brings a little more roundness also into the tone and it can create a little bit more of a dome too. Often classical singers will round their lips a little bit more and sort of like make this like puckery, kissy face on an E in their lower range especially so that it isn't as bright and it ends up matching the overall consistency in their voice. So I was noticing he, he sometimes rounds his E, sometimes doesn't. Right here he did though. I love those E's. <laughs> You can hear it especially on mean, even more than me. I hear just a little bit of rounding in there. Uh, also, uh, talking about that constant energy, it happens immediately in the very first word, holy. Uh, H's can be very difficult to project. So if you essentially close down some things that are in the vocal tract a little bit more, that'll create more friction on the air as it's going by so that you can project an H more. And he does that here. Let's, let's go back. Cause why not? Okay. Uh, maybe here, here. <laughs> I love that sword as it comes into you. Again, I love the way that he'll have longer, he'll essentially elongate certain vowels and cut certain vowels short. And he does this uh, to create like points of articulation within his phrasing. I love it. So in this case, uh, he said cat, I think it was cat and black instead of cat and black where you're elongating that vowel, it was cat and black. So it was very, very crisp and short. Um, I'm not even sure if he went hard to the two consonants right afterwards. He might've been playing more with the silence there. Okay, let's see. Cool Yeah. Okay, so he does go to the consonants of cat and black, um, but he plays with silence right around them as well. It's very interesting. The SH here is amazing. Shiny diamonds, like the eyes of a cat in the black and blue. <laughs> Something is coming for you. <laughs> Race for the morning, you can hide in the sun till you see the light. Ooh. I love the conviction in that phrase. Get away. Get away. Between the velvet lies, there's a truth that's hard as steel. Yeah. The vision never dies. Huh? Life's a never ending wheel. Ah, 
I hear a higher harmony in there. I'm really curious if that was Dio harmonizing with himself. I think it is, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, it's kind of nicely mixed too. It's like in the background and his voice is still very forward. So it's like a little, little sprinkle on top, but it's not like covering the cupcake with a, a thousand sprinkles because that's just too many. Everybody knows that. Uh, <laughs> I loved, uh, there was some fun vowel play in there. Let's go back and catch it. There you go, die eyes. Again, uh, when a person first starts singing, a lot of times they don't realize how much of the line is carried by vowels. The consonants can have and must have to be effective, a lot of energy coming through them. Um, but the consonants often will like break up the energy or have like, it's, it's they're really well used for articulation or um, moments of shifting how the line overall feels. But the consonants are that underlying steadiness. So if you really work on your, your vowels, sorry, did I say vowels or consonants? You guys get the idea. If you really work on the vowels, that tends to be where the meat of the sound is heard. Now, if you get specific with the vowels and things like a diphthong, by the way, that is D-I-P-H-T-H-O-N-G. I'm laughing at you live chat and your various spellings of that word. <laughs> um, if you get into a diphthong, that means you've got two vowels that are happening in like that same vowel space. It's really fun to play with the vowels in there. And he's actually going back and forth between them, di-i-i's, Ah, e, ah, e, and then like playing with that. That can be great for accenting various kinds of runs or just really making a fun sound. So let's do that again. The never dies. <laughs> it's awesome. Like some never we'll stay. Holy I love the way he's saying wheel there. And then it was like very pretty you had a moment of clean and then got back into a snarl and grip one more time his voice is amazing he has so much control Did anybody else not think that that bird was live? Because I was so surprised when it started moving. <laughs> Mad Mardigan! the amount of grit and like he just pulls and fry in a really fantastic way it feels like he still has a, a round and healthy sound that still has this like crazy laser in it too he's got a balanced sound and then he adds some fry to just give it some extra character i love the expression that he has now let's talk a little bit about these lyrics so jump uh, there was a jump 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 uh, jump 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 on the tiger. You can feel his heart, but you know he's mean. Some light can never be seen. Yeah. When I was going through the lyrics of this, I felt like this part was uh, particularly indicative of that uh, Christ figure or savior figure. The Dio had said the song was about, because it said some light can never be seen. Uh, so I thought that was, that was an interesting moment where I was like, oh yeah, I can see why most people and Initially, when I read it, I also was interpreting it as a Satan descent into hell. But there are certain lines in there that I guess if you shift them, you can say, oh, yeah, I see what Dio was getting at. That's kind of cool. I like it when songs have multiple possible interpretations. Okay, back to you. <laughs> Again, I was just basically like, ooh. Uh, I love the ranginess 
of this solo right now. And I'm really intrigued by the set that they've chosen for this. You know, we have, um, what did I say earlier? Mad Mardigan. I, I have the feelings that Dio is playing this Mad Mardigan character. If you don't know that, it's from Willow and you should watch that movie. Um, <laughs> this is his, his like whole garb and the sword everything really reminds me of Mad Mardigan. And I love what looks like an uh, abandoned church here. Such an amazing set for a music video. Like, I want to know where this is and go seeing some creepy opera in it or something. This is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And then the imagery with it is also very interesting. And I feel like it adds to that idea of a descent into hell. <laughs> I like the note that the guitar ended on there. It it was a second. So it was right above the root of the chord. So it felt like it it almost didn't return home, right? Because it didn't settle back into that bottom note of the chord where this uh, next verse started. I think that's a very interesting choice. It makes it linger with us a little bit longer, wonder what else it might have to say. It just doesn't feel settled. So very, very curious. Let's go back and listen to it once more. <laughs> There's a bunch to unpack right in there. The no, no is really cool. And then the mount, ah, oh, he's just so fierce in the way he sings ride. It's like vicious, ferocious. Wow. Because I've been listening to Dio more and, and just craving a lot more of his voice, I'm starting to hear some of the manners. It's like the style that makes up what Dio is. And that's one of my goals also with listening to a lot more of his music. We're going to see more on the channel. I, I just am really, really interested in him. I want to study how he sings. It's incredible. He could teach everybody. Uh, one of the things I think is in the Dio style is this distinctive slide off. It's almost like a toss off. And it tends to be a little more subtle. It's not like a slide down at the end of phrases. Uh, and he doesn't always use it. He uses it very specifically at certain times. And he's got different ways of ending notes in particular that are interesting and make up part of what makes his, um, his style, I'd say. So this slide off, there's sometimes a bite off, and sometimes you hold things off, uh, hold things longer, and then do a little tiny run off. So these things I'm noticing, he he has them in his bag of tricks, and they're one of the things that I think, like I would say, is part of the Dio sound. Let's go back a little bit, listen to how he's uh, working with his endings here. Oh, don't you see what I mean? There's a slide off. Slide off again. Run. Gotta get away. Get away. Sure. There's a run. There is a fight off. Sound. The commitment here and the fierceness that he's delivering it with, like this consistent amount of energy. The crazy thing to me is if I was listening to this kind of singing 
maybe not from him, but if I had a student come to me singing with this much fry or grit or harshness in their voice, uh, maybe five years ago, I would have said, mm, I'm not sure you should do that too much. And that's because a lot of times people approach harsh vocals in a not so healthy way. So a lot of voice teachers will say like, let's just keep it to clean singing. You should learn how to clean sing because that's that fundamental. But if you add harshness on top in the right way, you can do it without damaging your voice and it sounds fierce and cool. So that is definitely the case with Theo here. Uh, he never suffered in his career from uh, any, any sort of, I think, vocal abuse or anything like that. This is well, well done. Let's go back a little bit. <laughs> what up, Peter? Ooh, I love this this hell note. It, it's so much fun because it, it goes up and he adds a little more vibrato into it, vibrato that's nice, relaxed, even, and then does a, like a little ah, like a, almost like a fry growl <laughs> at the end of it. Oh, back. There. Yeah. <laughs> mm, and his mmms are good. Real good. <laughs> I hate it when songs by Dio end. <sighs> Ooh, cool. Neat, neat artwork there. I have to say it again. I love Dio. I think that he is truly uh, one of the best vocalists uh, that he's almost like the Freddie Mercury of metal. I love how he's come up with this style and this style that has evolved to form metal as we know it as well. I love getting to discover him for the first time on this channel with all of you. This song in particular had a really good groove and a really good drive the whole time. I feel like it was really catchy. Definitely had a little bit of micro head banging happening. <gasps> That's right, it happened. And I also just love how precise he is with his expression. He can do anything he wants to with his voice. And so it's so much fun to hear how he just can use one thing, the ending of notes, and express it in a bunch of different ways. And he has a bunch of different tricks and he adds them. If we could spend forever analyzing why he did a slide off of that or uh, why he decided to bite off of a certain word. But in the end, I wonder if he would do it two takes the same way. I think it might just be the feeling and the expression of the moment. It's really, really cool. I want to learn so much more from Dio, so please keep making recommendations for what we should do next on the channel down below. And if you want to come and say hello to me, I'm here every Monday, Tuesday, and Friday at 8 a.m. Arizona time. That's when we premiere videos and have a live chat. There are no commercials, and we just really like getting to know you better. So come and say hello to us. And you can find me also on Patreon and at thecharismaticvoice.com. See you somewhere soon.